Hello everyone and welcome to Best Side Cycling. It's a randomly rainy June day. I'm here uh, exploring trails today. So I'm here at the Lake Desan Trail in Renton and we're gonna go explore the Green River Trail today as I think this is where it connects. Um, I really haven't explored enough of this area. So uh, yeah, just took the time today. Just take a chill, ride around and show you all what's up. So let's go and check it out. So today is going to be another full trail video where you're just going to basically ride along with me and I'm going to caption along the whole way. As you can tell on the top right, I finally learned how to easily create these sort of online maps so you can follow exactly where I am. So as said before, this is the Lake the Sound Trail starting at the Notches Avenue in Renton which is sort of really awkward to connect to, but once you're here, actually this trail was built in 2020 and I think is, I would dare say in King County, one of the smoothest and widest trails that I've ridden on. Uh, it's rare to find something like this. Uh, the Burke Gilman, as nice as it is, as it is being that it connects so many awesome places, in terms of the actual pavement quality and whatnot, it does not compare to a lot of other trails. And here they have a lot of new benches too and all that. Um, it's a really shame that it's really so short. And to connect to here, you really do have to ride on some roads in Renton. So um, this was my very first time just deciding to finally explore this area and go along the Green River Trail, which is both of these super long. The Lake to Sound Trail will be, when completed, about 16 miles. It mainly connects around the SeaTac to the uh, Des Moines area, but uh, the sort of grand plan is really to connect all the way here into Renton and, and Ford. And I think it has a huge amount of potential. As well as, yeah, I really don't give enough visibility to some of these trails in this sort of corridor that is being south of Seattle in Tokwila, uh, Burien, and so forth. But i um, really glad to be here today and then also ride this towards West Seattle. Uh, this connects directly to the Green River Trail, which is 19 miles north-south and is really, really popular, super windy and uh, pretty different than what I usually go on. Um, so it's a neat little loop that I'm doing that today as part of going from basically east of Lake Washington down to Renton, uh, using some of those busy, busy roads to get to this starting point and then going through. Um, I really do hope that the plans to really connect this into the sort of uh, Lake Washington loop do eventually happen and I think this has a really, really great potential because this connection so far, as you can tell, has been real, real smooth, really nice to ride on and then a lot of nature all around, been seeing sort of bunnies left and right and if you're enjoying this video, of course, remember to roll over that like button and subscribe, you'll definitely get all sorts of updates from me. So. Uh, as we approach this crossing, we'll soon make it to the Duwamish slash Green River. And yeah, I mean, one thing I want to talk about was really how I get to know all the different bike routes and things in Seattle. And I think honestly, the only real best way is to just go out there and explore. Um, I find myself riding now with a lot of different uh, sort of caps and mindsets. And yeah, I think when I'm here riding on my commuter bike uh, with my commuter helmet, I'm really all about just seeing what's around, uh, making sure I get around safely. Uh, when I put on sort of my road helmet and ride my lightest road bike, then maybe my mindset sort of changes and all I want to do is climb hills. But definitely there's nothing that replaces in terms of just getting to know your city with just riding around on this local trail network. I know that it is sort of daunting though, there is a lot of gaps, so to minimize that, definitely use the tools with Google Maps, Strava heat maps, and things, and maybe ride with GPS to give you some hints. This route I'm using today, and that this is going to be a series um, to really uh, get you a really good look at everything. I've just been following the dark green sort of trail, so uh, definitely it's just making sure that you can get to these points, but we're about here at reaching the five first sights of the river as we just maybe take a quick stop to look around. And then here behind me we have the Duwamish River. We can expect to see it many different times going through this trail. I think it even changes names is why the different trails have the name, uh, different names here. But yeah, um, really cool spot so far and we'll just keep on rolling along. So yeah, a big plus of this road is definitely how intimate you are with the river. You're just sort of pretty close to it along the whole time and you see it in a lot of different contexts. 
Um, you see a lot of the rail, you sort of can maybe glean from the map maybe to the east and northeast. There's some good sites there, but overall, definitely a lot more industrial than uh, some of the other trail networks. But it means that it's probably a little fairly quiet in terms of maybe foot traffic and whatnot. But uh, my case here was that it was dead quiet, but it was also a weird sort of cold day. In, but uh, that was one thing I was going to bring up is that it's sort of funny as a Seattle light, but I sort of think of routes as either being shady or sunny because our temperature seems to have in these recent years just fluctuates so often one day being needing a jacket and the other day you're just uh, boiling. So I tend to actually pick routes that uh, match the weather conditions. So I pick shady routes for sunny days and vice versa. So. Uh, if the Sammamish River Trail was a sunny route, as, which, which it definitely is because you don't get that much cover, this is most definitely a shady route. You can see on the ground uh, there's still a lot more moisture, there's a lot of shade, so uh, that could also be something you guys can put in your calculations in terms of uh, which trails to ride, but yeah, definitely tons of foliage here. Also a ton of bunnies. Uh, I think in this, these clips I'm going to show, uh, we're going to pass by at least like a good number of them. I think we just went by another one. But yeah, um, here for this trail, if we do transition to a part where I, seeing it for all this for the first time, I wasn't truly convinced that it was the trail. It just seems like a large sidewalk as we're basically here in uh, suburbia again, uh, fee type of feeling, uh, large roads, large cars, and then uh, just here on this uh, thing on the side. So definitely look out for all the different driveways. I think this probably does cl classify as a trail just given that it's a much wider sidewalk and the curbs are at least pretty lenient, but definitely not the ideal. But there's going to be a lot more to show here on the Green River Trail, but I feel, yeah, I just wanted to give an in-depth look so that next time you come to check this out, you'll know exactly what to expect. And um, there are some important things really to call out with the Green River Trail with some gaps that I really want to highlight, so this establishes all the context for that but you guys actually a lot of you watching this are probably more experts on this whole area than me so please let, let me know in the comments if you have any insights for the other people when it comes to riding this route favorite things to do it with i don't know little nuggets of places to visit while you're along or things you want me to call out in the next section of the green river trail i'm super open to learning from you guys and yeah, so I think this is about where we're going to wrap up today's video as we just need to make this turn sort of across onto the right next to the freeway to connect on the trail again. But don't worry, it won't be long till another episode comes out. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.